I hate to take you back to a very long time ago in history, but this slide where these folks are watching TV in a very 1950s, 60s US household setting was the era and the period within which the US context of television business evolved. We had a traditional model for financing content in the United States that was big studio, and it was focused on high quality scripted series for broadcast networks. And what actually happened was the syndication market, which was selling content directly to independent broadcast stations, went away. A tectonic <laughs> shift started to take place in US broadcast specifically. And that tectonic shift was really brought to us by the Europeans. Light Entertainment, roughly 10 years ago, came to the United States as an alternative to scripted programming and to the extent a complement to it. So Non-scripted was a way to bring lower cost, lower risk programming. And in the early days, it was very suspect whether this would work in the United States. But quickly, these took hold. And the notion that we now, somewhat like a car, have to go from a stars where there were roughly you know a few hours of scripted programming to 60 hours a year in a two to three year period was an incredibly daunting challenge so what we started to do was look at the benefits of international co-production. So I think there's a real industry imperative that we can all work on, which is how to create more efficient transatlantic partnerships. So what would some key characteristics of this look like? I think what you look for is speed to implementation. We need to conceptually think about things as slates rather than as individual productions. And then we have to think about more streamlined mechanisms of keeping everybody informed in the loop and working well together. So the opportunity, if we can find a more efficient international co-production model and work together to do that, is for you all to work with these folks on that slide right there in a much bigger way, opening up a lot more opportunity, a lot more potential collaboration, financing, and in the sense when there's treaty monies to be had in the classical sense of European content or you know Canadian, French co-pros, accessing that in new ways with major US networks attached. I'm going to move on to you, Nick. Um, when I started in television you know, 40 years ago, um, it was the BBC said to me, you give us the money and we'll make the programme. Is that still the model if, uh, for in-house production, that you're the editorial it's, thrust it's, of it? It's certainly not the first time I've, I've heard that, and I, I genuinely hope the BBC is getting better at co-production. And, and I think it isn't just a co financing yep. arrangement. A co-production, a true co-production in my mind, is about joint editorial vision for a program. Somebody, an individual, has to take ultimate responsibility for delivering to, yeah. to the broadcast. Yeah, of course, it's different in different genres, isn't it? If you're working in factual, you can actually do different versions, much harder to do in drama. A lot of the drama that we've done is costume drama. You're telling a story which is already there, and you recreate it. Uh, but you're right, pace and music and all those things are different and different requirements in different territories. Uh, and I think, you know, we have to think as an industry quite seriously about how we can do that without hiking the cost so much that actually it takes so, so away the benefit of doing it. It really. comes back to that creative consensus around the writer, the producer, the director. So that and, and which compromises people are prepared to take. And, you know, mm. the BBC very much has the UK audience in mind what it thinks it wants, just as our colleagues in America will, will have that view. Somehow we need to try and, and pull that together. If there's anything that you see as really changing in co-production now, what, what would you say that is? I think the BBC is changing more because it needs to. And, and the difficulty for the BBC is that, you know, we have very strict quotas and targets about representing the UK, filming in the UK, reflecting the UK mm -hmm. back to it. But obviously the numbers don't stack up. So I think the direction we're going in is identifying areas of the slates where we can really focus and say, right, these 13 hours of drama are going to be co-producible. Let's start from scratch with that in mind and develop according to that and, and we know what we're going to get. OK, maybe I could move on to you, Joey, from Entertainment One. Tell us a little bit about the, the strategy that E1 is, is, is adopting. Is, is it sort of closer to John's model or is it closer to Nick's model? Well, I would say we're uh, probably uh, a little bit of both. I think really of co-productions from our standpoint as, as kind of being a three-legged stool where we look at it as there's the US, there's Canada, and then there's the international component. And if we can get two of those legs to stand, we can leverage that against the third. 
Uh, if you look at some of the series that we're currently producing, uh, a good example is Rookie Blue. Rookie Blue started off as a pilot script. Uh, we had Shaw, uh, formerly CamWest Global in Canada, as our anchor tenant. Uh, we then took it to UNI, Universal Networks International, their paid channel group. They came on board. And we then went to the US networks and said, we're going to make 13 episodes, not we want to produce a pilot, not we want to develop this fur further, but we are looking for a US partner. We haven't yet started production. Um, you can have meaningful input on the scripts, meaningful input on the cast, and you can get this series at a reduced license fee. However, you need to commit to 13 episodes. Uh, we did that. It launched last summer. It was the highest rated original series on ABC in the last 10 years. We've just finished comp uh, production on a second season. Uh, similarly, we did that with a series called Haven, uh, based on a Stephen Sh King short story. Uh, that actually started uh, originally as a pilot at ABC, was passed on, we got a hold of it. Um, we then brought in Universal Networks International, Sci-Fi Channel in the US, and then backed it into the Canadian broadcaster Shaw. So there's really a lot of different ways that things can come together uh, in terms of a co-production. We have found that the international pay channel partners are really an ideal partner for us. They allow us to uh, pre-sale uh, a certain amount of territories while leaving a lot of open territories, the free TV channels where they are, um, allowing us to close the gap um, and make the production affordable for all the parties that are concerned. Um, there's another, uh, another ways that we can get involved in terms of a non-treaty co-production, and that's by sharing um, distribution risk as well. We move on to, to Australia. Des Monaghan, Screen Time. Uh, you've been in this co-production game for a long, long time. What wisdom do you have to bring us, Des? Um, certainly a long time. Um, what wisdom? Well, to be honest, and not to put a damper on things, um, co-productions are a last resort for us. Um, co-productions are extraordinarily difficult. Anybody here um, who's got up a drama series, or indeed any series, knows how difficult that is. To add then partners um, squares the level of difficulty. Um, and the first thing you must do is define exactly what you're talking about. Are you talking about a creative co-production? If you are, what is it that you want out of it? What do your partners want out of it? Um, Co-financing, pre-sales, fine. We do it all the time. Uh, happily do it. It's an essential prerequisite of getting expensive series up. But genuine co-creative control of a show is extraordinarily difficult. Uh, we have found, and this is our experience, other people have had more success than ourselves in this area. In our experience, if you start with a genuine rationale, a genuine creative rationale for a co-production, then the ch you have a great chance of pulling it off. If you try and construct something purely for co-production purposes, the chances are, certainly in our experience, uh, you will come to grief. Um, if you set something up um, where you are happy to cede creative control, because the financing is coming from somewhere else. Fine if that's what you want to do, and on occasions we've done that, though these days we tend to avoid it. But again, you have to have absolute clarity as to what it is uh, that you're wishing to do and what it is your partner, or partners, God forbid, are wishing to do. And clearly the more partners, the more chance for mischief. Okay, if we'll move on to uh, Diego. So, Fox Studios. We have two different ways to approach the business. One way is the traditional model on cable. When I mean traditional model, that's pilot. If the pilot got picked up, we produce a series. And when I arrived to the studio uh, with Emiliano Kalemsuk, that is uh, the ex-president of the studio, now he's running, he's running uh, Shine Americas, uh, I, I, I arrived from Italy, where we used to run Fox International channels there. I mean, uh, uh, we were on the, on the network uh, business. Uh, and we are both Argentinians, and you know, for us, crisis is more a lifestyle thing than a contingent thing. <laughs> uh, so, when we saw the model, we, said we we start working in something different. I mean, we had to prove something different. I mean, uh, it had to be a way to produce television for uh, U.S. broadcasters uh, in a different way. And we tried to do this with three different shows. Uh, one of those was uh, Persons Unknown, a great script uh, that we shot. A sh it was a show of 13 episodes 
like uh, E1 is doing right now, we, we went to the network and we say, you know, we can shoot 13 episodes for a very, very efficient cost, shooting in Mexico City, and if you have to commit for 13 episodes. So we did it. We had two partners on that uh, production. One was Televisa, that of course was also uh, rendering services as for, for all the below the line down there in Mexico. And the other one was uh, Rai from Italy. Uh, they both uh, uh, start producing with us the show. And I mean, the, the, the weird thing was that we haven't had an American network attached to the project from the very beginning. So we start production on our own risk. Uh, and it, it wasn't a good idea, actually. Uh, what happened was that then was a negative pickup for NBC, a very, very reduced license fee, as I told. Uh, and since the network there was no network executive involved in the development of the show, actually, it was hard for them to take you know, all the care we, that show needed. Phyllis, uh, you're CBC, the National Public Broadcaster in Canada. Uh, you've actually managed to run this interesting line of getting Canadian content and using co-production very efficiently over the years. How have you managed that magic? Well, you were one of the pioneers, as I recall, <laughs> Pat. Uh, we've been doing uh, international co-productions for quite a long time, um, big and small. And I think it's partly because we are a, a very large landmass with a very small population. So that gives you a sense of why uh, we ideally need to find partners to increase the amount of Canadian content that we can do, and treaty co-productions can be counted as Canadian content for our conditions of license and for access to various tax breaks and funding in Canada, um, depending on the involvement of key, uh, key performers, um, key cast, key directors, et cetera, et cetera. And what we look for are programs that have resonance with Canadians. We come out of two tradition, two main traditions, the British monar monarchical tradition and the, um, the French, uh, from France tradition, because uh, Quebec, which has about eight million of those uh, of our population base, uh, is uh, very much almost a separate country in its own way. Um, and they have a protected language barrier that keeps them from the wash that American programs um, uh, give to us, um, which is often a blessing and sometimes not so much because we want to maintain our own culture. We are the public broadcaster, so we need to be mainly Canadian content, and we are. We have really only one time period in, in prime time that we're currently filling with international co-production. Right now, um, we're, we've finished up the pil of pil Pillars of the Earth. We're going to be running Camelot, um, and uh, we'll see how we do with Camelot. It could run for several seasons, um, which would be lovely. We've had a terrific tour du monde of the world of co-production and the various different models that are, are available and are being developed to meet the need of high quality production that pools money and uh, hopefully has creative integrity and brings great shows to audiences.